It's always a real shame when a brilliant trailer turns out that it is in fact for a brilliant movie, but the trailer could be slightly guilty of mis-selling said movie. Hi everyone, Nico Luro here from the Silver Screen Dudes, and yeah, my review for Wicked Little Letters, which I love for a number of reasons. Um, and let's get into that, because uh, stay tuned until the end if you want to actually know what the final score was. But I've already hinted this is a very, very good film, but not without its problems. And it, let, let me get the problems out of the way first and then let's just go positive, because the problems are very minute. To be honest, I think the film is highly guilty of mismarketing itself. Because if you look at the trailers which I can't have the volume for here because I'll be completely demonetized because of the amount of profuse swearing that occurs. But if you do look at the trailers, which I encourage you to do, it's just F-bomb after S-bomb after C-bomb, and it's some of the <laughs> most eloquent, beautifully constructed swearing I have heard since Latin <laughs> from Metro Kesovich. It's, you know... If this movie was being graded for swearing creativity alone, it's an immediate perfection 10 out of 10. But that therein lies the very problem. The trailer very much sold you. It didn't missell the story, but it missold you on the amount of creative swearing there would be. Now, the reason I'm bringing this up is because when I left the cinema, I actually really came out beaming, laughing, having had a great time. And I spoke to a lot of people, and they seemed not content. They seemed like they'd been missold to. I couldn't quite figure out what's going on here. They gave me a point of view, which I happen to fully agree with. It's like, yeah, but the trailer sold us on this idea of this grandiose British South Coast comedy with lots of swearing. And it's not that. And that's the huge negative of this movie. And that's why you need to go in there and temper your expectations. Because if you go in here expecting an hour and 40 minutes of Olivia Colman swearing, you're not gonna get that. And you may leave brutally disappointed and the trader would have you believe that that's exactly what you're getting. As long as you go in expecting a dramedy and not a flat out comedy, you'll be absolutely fine. And I think you should enjoy this movie much the same way I did. Because now moving on to the positives, where to begin? <laughs> saying Olivia Colman is good at this point is like saying Meryl Streep is good. It's like, no kidding, right? Jesse Buckley absolutely stole the show for me. Which is huge when you consider that she was sharing screen time with Olivia Colman. Jessie Buckley gives a career-defining star performance in this. It's, it's quite mesmeric. Um, Story-wise, it's very simple. Two neighbors, one Irish, one very, very English. Olivia Colman plays the English neighbor. She's, she's one of those religious types who's very, very preachy and her her poo doesn't smell of anything but the purest roses. And her neighbour, Irish neighbour, is a foul-mouthed, lower-class character. The movie very much picks up with the two of them at odds, and you're like, well, what's happened here? You're implied and you're shown eventually that there was a friendship here. What happened? And I don't want to give away the finer point of this movie, but essentially, the way the movie plays out is it has you believe that Jesse Buckley's character is writing these highly offensive, to the degree that they actually constitute libel, horrific letters addressed to Olivia Colman's character. And Olivia Colman goes to the police. The police, based on the fact that Jesse Buckley is a foul-mouthed little so-and-so, don't really need much more than the evidence that's there in front of them. And Jesse Buckley, who has a young daughter, ends up being imprisoned. So now we have this whole plot revolving around did she do it? As in, did Jesse Buckley do it? Is she guilty? And if so, what was her motive for doing it? Conversely, is she innocent? And if she's innocent, then who's writing these letters? You can see where we're going. We're very much leaning on the whole she's innocent. And the movie, within the first 20 minutes, makes that clear that she's innocent. And the whole denouement, the whole narrative of this film is to say, who is writing these letters and why? I didn't catch it. Um, they do tell you about halfway through the movie who is guilty of it, and then it kind of turns into a, well, we need to catch them red-handed, or Jesse Buckley's still going to go down because such is the way of the, 90, of the early 20th century police force, highly sexist and highly profily. 
Um, and speaking of sexist and profiling, one of the star characters in this, Woman Inspector Moss, played by, bear with me, and Jana Vassan. Yes, never heard of her, but I adore her after this. So she's very much representative of the new wave of the police force. A woman police officer, who knew? And she's the only one who believes that Jesse Buckley's character is completely innocent on the basis that she, she's such a foul mouth, she wouldn't take the time to actually just write letters. She'd just come out and say it. Despite the fact that she's been given direct orders to not take sides in this and to not be involved in a case that basically isn't even hers, she kind of doesn't listen to the powers that be and she ends up getting involved and her story is incredible. And the crazy thing about all this is that it's a true story. This crazy madness happened and the letters start being sent out to judges and to police officers and to all the local people of Little Hampton. It's genuinely quite crazy how much this little community gets riled up, however correctly or incorrectly, against one woman. And it's quite vicious to see what people are willing to do to kind of... I don't know, have self-fulfilling prophecy. The movie's got a lot to say about how far we've come as a society, but also how clearly far we still have to go in order to achieve any type of equality. It has a lot to say about our legal system and about our, our character fault of profiling people based on how they behave or how they look or what gender they are or what race or creed they're of. Such a little confined movie the larger narrative beats and themes are quite wide-reaching and for that reason I'm going to wrap this up and give Wicked Little Letters an 8.5 out of 10. It is highly creative, it's funny, it's one of those stories that if you didn't know it existed you wouldn't go out hunting for it. It's not a history shifting story but it's highly important and you know the movie ends by saying that this story was lost until now and I think it's fantastic that it's been found and it's got a new audience and it's a, a new generation of people are going to know about this story. Are oh, you probably going to miss out on this one? Yes, but do I? Because there's a lot of movies coming out in the next in the coming weeks, you know, June 2 if you're in the States is out already, it's coming out this week in the UK, there's a lot coming. But I would really impress upon you, if you've got a moment to tear yourself away from the big bombastic coke and popcorn blockbusters and find it in yourself to see a really brilliant character driven dramedy you're going to be hard pushed to find a better movie that fits into that specific description i've just laid out this year it's quite brilliant and i i'm looking forward to seeing it again frankly it's I think this might be on my top 10 of the year. It's that good. And I want to know what you guys had to think. Are you planning on seeing Wicked Little Letters now that I've mentioned it? Let me know your thoughts down in the description below. Down in the description. Down in the comment section below. Uh, there should be a like up here and a video which you can click on up here which will take you on to one of our next reviews. So please go ahead, show your support to the channel. Subscribe if you haven't done so already. And I will see you all on the next video. Bye for now.